But yeah, so just to begin with, uh, welcome everyone. This is iPhone Basics through the Downers Grove Public Library. Um, my name is Andrew. I'm the instructor for this class uh, and uh, a fellow iPhone user. So uh, let's see, I'll just sort of go over um, the, the scope of this class. Uh, I have a little poll to send out to you uh, that you can respond to in Zoom. Uh, just helps me sort of calibrate the, the rest of the hour here. Um, but to begin with, for iPhone basics, uh, our objectives are uh, to be able to send and receive text messages on your iPhone, uh, to be able to make and receive phone calls, uh, to customize your settings in the iPhone, and also to familiarize yourself with the uh, layout of the phone. Um, so just a few bullet points there. Uh, we do also offer an iPhone intermediate class uh, on sort of a rotating basis. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start with a poll. Uh, that should be showing up as a, a pop-up for you, I believe. Um, let me know if you're not seeing that. Um, and Andrew, how, what do, how do we find out what kind of iPhone we have? I mean, I know. It's... That's a great question. Um, so if you don't know, it's totally fine to say don't know. Don't worry about that. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't want to overwhelm with the number of options here. Uh, but if you've gotten your phone in the last few years, it's an iPhone uh, 10 or later. Um, you can tell that by uh, the port at the bottom. If it just has the lightning port and no headphone jack, uh, then that's an iPhone 10, 11, 12, one of those. Um, there's no need to be really precise, but there are uh, some variations, pretty significant variations uh, in the hardware and, and software as well um, between certain generations. Um, and then of course, the first question uh, is just to ask how, uh, how new to iPhones, you know, using iPhones daily are you? Um, Okay, so I'm seeing here, uh, just based on this sort of straw poll, uh, a lot of you have been using an iPhone regularly for quite some time. Um, a lot of you have uh, an iPhone from before the iPhone 10. Uh, some have an, an even earlier iPhone, a, a five or, or four, uh, possibly earlier than that. Um, some of us don't know, and that's that's totally fine. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, okay, so uh, thank you all so much for that feedback. Um, I'm just gonna move on through to uh, the start of our course. So uh, to begin with, uh, we're gonna go over some of the sort of basic anatomy of the phone. Um, to start with, at the very bottom, I'll just hold this up, ignore all the dust. <laughs> uh, this is, to, to clarify, my phone is an iPhone X. Yours might have some uh, differences, but that's fine. Um, so we've got the uh, lightning port. That's where you would plug a charging cable and headphones on an iPhone 10 or later. Um, and like I mentioned, there's no headphone jack here. We've got the speakers and the lightning port and that's it. Um, and as, as well, the microphone, obviously when you hold the phone up to make a call, the microphone's gonna be at the bottom. Um, older phones are gonna have a 35 millimeter uh, headphone jack. Um, Newer phones, you would need an adapter for that to plug in. Okay, so uh, moving up the side of the phone, 
uh, and this is in a case, but just look past that. Uh, you've got the minus volume, plus volume, and the silencer. And so this is for adjusting the volume of the ringtone or the phone volume. And then this little tab, if it's showing orange, that means that the silencer is on. So uh, your ringer is not going to make a sound. It's going to go to vibration if that's set up. Great example. <laughs> um, and let's see, so then uh, on the other side, you've got um, the lock button. If you push that, it locks the phone. Uh, very useful when you're done using it, you can just hit the button and it'll uh, close it so that you, know, you won't be able to uh, hit buttons or call somebody from your pocket or your bag. Um, and then moving around to the back of the phone, we've got a camera lens and, uh, and a flash, that's what it's called. Um, newer phones might have two camera lenses or even three. Um, and let's see, I'll just demonstrate the flash. So that's your flashlight I'm, I'm opening. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, and then on the front of the phone itself, mine, uh, iPhone 10 and later, does not have the home button. Yours may. It'll be a little round button right about here. Uh, we'll get into the uses of that. And then, of course, you've got the front-facing camera and uh, the speaker for making calls. Um, on the screen itself, and then I'll move into sharing my screen, uh, we've got the uh, cellular signal, Wi-Fi signal, battery, that's all on there. Uh, the time will be in the upper left. Okay, so um, now that we've gone over that, I'm going to get into some uh, handy areas of the phone. And to do that, I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so you should be seeing my phone screen. So this is the home screen. When you unlock the phone, you're going to see this. I have all my apps organized into folders, um, but normally they would be filling the screen sort of like how this one is uh, right there. Okay, so a couple of handy areas. First is if you swipe down from the top on the center of the screen. This is your notification center. It shows you all uh, recent notifications to your phone. They're going to display up here. So I had a, a missed phone call, some Discord notifications. Um, if you want to clear any of these out, you can just swipe left on it and then hit clear. You can also clear all notifications if you tap the X and then tap clear. Um, and that's just for your reference. No problem if you uh, don't keep up with clearing those. Um, and then uh, we can swipe right from the home screen and that'll bring up the widget center. Uh, yours might look a little bit different um, but it's got some sort of basic uh, widgets that you can access from here. For example, your calendar, um, the weather. I've got my, my charge down here. I have it set up to display my screen time, uh, the amount of time that I've spent in, in each app. Um, so widgets, uh, are, are just sort of an at-a-glance view of different apps, different basic apps that you might want to, to check on frequently. So now I'm going back to my home screen and I'll show you the control center. Uh, if you're on an iPhone 10 or later, uh, you're going to swipe down from the upper right corner 
if you have um, earlier than iPhone 10, uh, in other words, if your phone has a, a home button on it, you're going to swipe up from the bottom. So the control center, um, kind of similar to the widget, uh, widget center, this gives you a handful of uh, uh, handy apps at a glance. Um, there's the flashlight, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a calculator you can pull up. Very easy to, to access quickly. Um, you can go into your camera. You can go into your alarms, open a note. These are also customizable, so you can add more apps to that if you choose. And then, of course, in the upper left, uh, you can set your phone to airplane mode. Notice that that uh, blocks off wireless and uh, cellular. Um, I have my phone on do not disturb right now. That's the little half moon. Um, if you set your phone to that, it's kind of, I think of it as sort of a, a midway point between setting the ringer manually on silent um, and moving your phone to airplane mode. Um, you're just not going to get uh, vibrating or ringing notifications for, for calls or anything else. Um, We've got the brightness control here. You can slide that up and down to control your screen brightness. Uh, most phones uh, lately will uh, kind of adjust that automatically depending on the brightness of the area you're in. Um, we've also got a volume control here. And this is a portrait orientation lock. So if you have this uh, lit up, that means when you actually rotate the phone, it's not going to change the view. OK, so this is the control center, um, just kind of a, a handy uh, menu to have access to. Um, you know, say you want to pull up your camera really quickly. You want to adjust your screen brightness without having to go into your settings. That's all you need to do. Just go right to the control center. And now um, I'm going to get into a few settings on customizing your phone a little bit. Um, if you've been using this phone for some time, you might have already done these uh, in some fashion. Uh, when you start a phone from factory settings, it kind of prompts you through some of these steps. Uh, but that's not always the case. So for me, I've got my settings app right here on my home row. Uh, it looks like a little gray toothed gear. So you can just go into that. We're going to start by going to your wallpaper. So we'll scroll down and then wallpaper is right here. So there's two wallpapers that your phone will use. The first is the lock screen and you can see that on the left here. Uh, that's what your phone looks like when it's locked. Um, and then the home screen is on the right. So you can set different pictures for both of those, you can set the same picture. I'll show you how to, how to do that. Uh, you just tap, choose a new wallpaper at the top. And then we've got some options of photos. Uh, there's some uh, images from the iPhone, but it's fun to choose your own picture. So let's see, I'm going to go to portrait mode. Here's a picture of my cat, not Meg. Um, so you can kind of drag and position it however you want. Um, you can also, if you hold two fingers on the picture and then pull them apart, you can zoom in. Same as, uh, same works if you hold two fingers on it and push them together. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, the, the pinch and zoom motion. Um, 
that if you're not super familiar with now, you'll get a handle for as you go. Um, another thing is at the bottom, uh, we've got this perspective zoom setting. Uh, most people don't love that. Uh, what that does is it changes, uh, the picture moves a little bit as you tilt the phone. Um, yeah, a lot of people find that that uh, makes them kind of dizzy. So <laughs> I definitely recommend switching that off. Um, it's just not worth the, uh, the 3D effect. And then you can tap set and then it'll, it'll ask you if you'd like to set it for the lock screen, the home screen or both. So simple as that. If you set it for just the lock screen, for example, uh, then you're just gonna go back in, find another photo and set it for your home screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. Um, next, I'll take you back to the settings and we'll go into uh, this red box with a dot for notifications. Uh, the notification settings are useful if you find that you're getting overwhelmed with notifications from a certain app that aren't useful. Uh, a lot of game apps, if you have any, any games on your phone, uh, sometimes uh, can get a little annoying that way. Um, so all you need to do is once you're in uh, your notifications panel, uh, we can just find an app that we want to change notifications for. Um, I'm going into Discord. You can, for one thing, you can block notifications completely with this slider at the top. Um, next, if you want, you can change the type of notifications you get. Um, so whether or not you see it in the notification center uh, that I showed you earlier, whether or not it shows up on the lock screen as a banner notification. Um, banners just show up kind of at the top of the phone screen um, as you're using it. Um, and next, uh, this is useful where it says banner style. Um, you can change temporary to persistent. Persistent just means it stays there at the top of your phone until you open it or until you swipe it away. So I'm going to switch this one to persistent because um, I want them to be a little bit more visible for me. Um, and that's really the basics of it. You can do that with any app, like say you want to limit uh, the notifications Facebook sends to you. Um, Badges refers to the notifications that show on the icon itself. So for example, in my uh, mail app here, I've got a badge notification um, that I've got some emails. Uh, the phone app, I've got a notification there. You could also switch those off if you, know, you, you just don't wanna see those. So pretty simple. Um, back in our settings, I'm going to move on to your uh, face ID or touch ID. Um, now, which of these you see will depend on your phone. Uh, newer phones have the face ID. Uh, phones that are uh, before the iPhone 10, you've got touch ID. Um, and that just uses your thumbprint on or your fingerprint, whichever. Um, on the iPhone's home button, unlock it for you. So to open this, you're going to need to uh, put in your phone's passcode. And now we can choose what the face ID or the touch ID is going to be able to unlock. Uh, so you can unlock your phone with it. You can uh, down, uh, approve apps for download from the the App Store or iTunes. Uh, you can use it to autofill passwords and remember them for you. You can also set up alternate appearances if 
uh, there's other trusted people that you want to have access to your phone. Uh, you can add their face ID or their uh, fingerprint as well. Um, there's other settings here revolving around the passcode. So for example, if you wanted to switch your passcode off, just make it so that any swipe up will open your phone. You can do that. You can also change it if you need to change your password. Those settings right here. Um, so those are the basics of uh, your phone's access ID and uh, and passcodes. And next, I think we're going to go into uh, some of the key apps themselves. So we'll start with messages. Uh, for me, again, I have this on my home row. Um, it's the little uh, white speech bubble on the green background. This is your texting app. So what we Wait, see I here. Found it yet. Where was it? Um, I have it on my home row. Uh, it might be somewhere else for you, probably on your home screen somewhere. All the messages. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also say if you if you need to find an app, you can swipe. I believe, yeah, swipe right to. Come on. Uh, your widgets. And then there will be a search bar at the top. Uh, it might recommend messages for you as it's done here with me. Um, otherwise, you can just type in messages and it'll give you uh, an app suggestion if you're having trouble finding it. Okay, um, so once we're in the messaging app, you can start a new conversation in the upper right. There's this little uh, pen and paper. Ignore that. Little pen and paper. Uh, in the to field, you put in your, your recipient, and then you can just start typing the message to them. Um, you can put in a recipient based on, uh, oops based on uh, the number that you start typing. You can also just type in a contact like, and then see that if we have a conversation with that person, it'll pull up uh, previous messages from them. You can also uh, browse for uh, contacts that you've messaged before. Um, you can search in your phone and that'll actually pull up uh, some suggestions, not only of contacts, but of locations, uh, photos that have been exchanged, uh, documents and things like that. So let's see what else. Um, that's right. So when you're done sending a message, All you need to do to send it is hit the blue arrow button in the top. Andrew, um, yeah. when, when I hit the edit button, a little box comes up that says select messages, edit pins, or edit name and photo. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. You kind of, yeah. Can you kind of see the box that popped up right here? Huh, that's weird. Um, oh, yeah, so like, I mean, you can see here, let's see. I'm gonna, um, yeah, so now there's nothing. And okay. Let's get the edit. Fuck. Yeah, that box shows up again. And that never used to happen and it just started and I don't know what to do about that. Hmm. Um, and that was when you were hitting edit, you said? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, yeah, it's just like right now you can kind of just see I'm in the messages. Okay. As soon as I hit the edit, the box shows. Okay, um, so you don't, 
I would say like you don't really need to use the edit button. Um, when you go into your messages, if you want to send a message, you can just go straight into the conversation. Does that work for you? <laughs> it does. Um, what some of I have not done a good job of deleting things, and so I I have messages that go back years. But I want to let's say I don't want to delete the whole message or the whole stream because there's some pictures I want to save. Yeah. So I could just you know like um you know like again here this last message says left Dan a message. I don't need that anymore. So if, if I want to just delete this or this, but if I go back, there might be a you know picture. Let's see here. You know, let's say I want to save that screen print. Um, I want to save that. So I don't want to delete this whole message um, stream from Joanna because there are some important things to save. Yeah. Most of the junk I'm ready, I want to get rid of. Yeah. Um, I would, so I would just, and this may run kind of contrary to what you've come to be used to with a cell phone, but I would just not delete any messages. Um, you've got, so I, I used to do that myself. I've got conversations that haven't been updated since 2016 in this phone. Yeah. Um, and another thing you can do, let me, let's see. Um, so, if you go into a conversation and you uh, tap the little I for info at the top, um, you can get to this panel that shows you uh, the contacts in the conversation. Um, and this is a this is a conversation uh, a text group that I have with my family, but. Uh, it might just be between you and one other person, doesn't need to be a group text. Um, but like if we scroll down, we've got like uh, some images, some documents, that's all saved from the conversation. Um, let's see. any rate um yeah, i mean obviously the one issue is if you've got let's say four or five years of text messages yeah to try to find a picture that somebody sent you in let's say 2016 if you've got four years worth of stuff to keep scrolling through i mean it could take probably an hour to scroll back far enough so, well, so that's the thing you don't need to scroll back through the text themselves uh you can just open that that eye panel and then you can scroll back through only the images and that'll make it oh. a lot simpler okay so yeah it'll show oh, yeah. you all all images sent uh in that conversation and only the images okay i don't see an eye panel um let me now i have a, a 5s an old phone Okay, this will probably be the same for you, but so open a text message and then tap on the person's name. Yeah. And then oh. you have these options. Yeah, I never did that. So if I go to info. Yeah, what do I find? So it'll show photos towards the bottom there. Does that work oh. for you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Never, never, never knew that. And then, of course, you can hit see all to just show photos. Um, yeah. Andy, I wanted to know. Yeah. You tap on a, a message in order to see the background. But I mean, how you get down to the, you know, I use, use the word scrolling down, but I'm not able to get that. I um, usually send message, but I never went through that part of it. Let's see. Let see. So, Okay, suppose I take a message and then tap it. I might have the same phone as you, I think, number 10. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Um, so I, I don't see the uh, picture, but I see the audio, FaceTime, info like that. 
Oh, but yeah. So, so you can add pictures for each contact. Um, by default, it's going to show just their initials. And let me show you how to do that. Okay. Um, so if you get out of this app, we'll go into contacts. Okay. And now you can take any, this is my sister, uh, you can take any contact here, um, hit edit on it, and then up here, add a photo. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Oh. That is where do you get the photo? Okay, all right. Yeah, where? So you can, you Thank can you. get a photo for. Where would you get the photo? You'd have to have it on your phone. So uh -huh. uh, maybe one you've taken with the person or. Oh. Okay. You know, yeah, but once you have it there on the phone, you can find it from your saved images. Then when you scroll down, the rest of them comes, is it? The history That's of. That's right, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's see. So we, we've gone over sending text. Uh, one other thing I want to note is that if the message is in blue, um, that means that this is an iMessage. iMessages uh, are only between iPhones and they send a little bit faster than normal text messages. Um, and they're also, they can be sent as long as you have wireless internet. You don't need to have a uh, cell service to send an iMessage. So there's nothing you need to do to set that up. It's just going to happen automatically um, when you're in a conversation with a, another person um, who has an iPhone. Um, OK, so I'm going to move along from that. Uh, there's any questions later, if we have time, we can uh, circle back to those. But as far as uh, using the phone aspect of the, the iPhone, um, so let's go to our phone app. It's the green box with the white phone on it. And then you can see right now it's showing me voicemails. Um, if you want to make a call, there's a few ways you can do that. The first is by going to your keypad. And then here you can just punch in the number like you would on, uh, on a, a pre-cellular phone. Um, you can also, if you tap at the top of the screen in this white space, you can paste in a number. So that's kind of handy. Um, also, if you start if you, if you have a contact in your phone that you'd like to call, uh, what you want to do there is navigate to contacts. And then you can just scroll through people. Uh, also at the top, you can search for somebody in particular. But so say I find somebody that I want to ring up. I find their contact and then you've got a call by iPhone up here. Find one that's. Uh, what are those little pictures after their names? Oh yeah, so I don't want to throw you off with this, but I kind of like code my contacts based on how I know them. I had a lot of different groups of friends, but um, I just added like an emoji after their last name, um, kind of signifying like where they're from. <laughs> Um, that's definitely not required. Okay. Um, but yeah, so calling from, uh, from a contact, you just tap to open the contact and you can click call and it's really, uh, easy as that. Uh, there's also your recent calls, uh, right here. So, uh, in red, we have. I believe unrecognized calls. No, sorry, those are, are missed calls. Um, any call that's uh, in black um, and has the little check mark next to it, that means that it was an accepted call. And a call that is in black and has the little phone symbol to the left of it, that was an out, outbound call that you made. You can also mark certain contacts as favorites, so you can pull them up over here. 
in this tab. Um, so you don't need to find them in your contacts or search. For them. I, I'm in a class and I did something wrong. I'm sorry. I pushed okay. the wrong button. But okay. how do you no. delete a contact? It worked. <laughs> how do you delete a favorite? Uh, let's see. I think we go to edit and then, yeah, you just tap the, uh, the minus sign oh. and it'll offer to delete it for you. Okay. Okay, so let's see. And then as far as receiving calls, this is pretty straightforward, but if you have the phone unlocked, it's going to show up, uh, take you to another screen. It'll have either a red uh, decline call button, um, a red decline and send a voicemail button, or a green phone icon. Um, so you can accept the call, you can decline it, you know, whatever you want from there. Um, if the phone's locked when you're receiving the call, you'll have to slide to open it. So pretty simple. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on now to accessing the internet. Um, I realized uh, just before setting up for this class that I don't have the Safari app on my phone right now. Uh, the app that I use for web browsing is Firefox, but if you have um, an app that you would like to use, uh, well, by default, it uses Safari. Um, you can always download other web browsers from the App Store like I've done. Um, but Safari, uh, it looks like a blue compass on a white background. Uh, that's your web browser. So you can go into that. Um, and at the top, there will be a search bar. Uh, you just type in the desired URL, or you can search for uh, certain terms as though you were Googling it. Either way, that'll work. Um, OK. Uh, so just a brief aside on that. Uh, moving on, we'll go into the camera. So I'm going to access this again from, uh, from my control panel up here. Um, you just swipe down or swipe up, depending on your phone, and you can go into the camera. Oops. So now the camera, uh, by default, opens to phone. Uh, you can swipe right on this little dial here and switch to video and then tap record the red button and it'll start recording your video. There's some other options too. Uh, by far, you're going to use phone and video the most. Um, I'd also like to point out that you have access to both cameras this way. Um, so right now I'm using the forward facing camera. Um, if you'd rather, you can tap the little arrow button at the bottom right here, and that'll switch to the front facing camera, uh, sometimes called the selfie camera. Um, so you can use either of those for filming video or taking photos. Um, and again, all you need to do to snap a picture is tap this button right here or Press the record. Really easy as that. Um, so now uh, let's move on to photos. I'm going to go into the folder that has my photos app. Uh, the photos app looks like this color wheel, sort of rainbow flower thing. Uh, Tap to open that. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so we've got uh, photo albums here. We've got, uh, it'll find people and places that you've taken photos of most frequently. Um, you can actually scroll down and sort based on uh, just videos, uh, just selfies or pictures that have been taken with a front facing camera. 
Um, you can go into uh, pictures that have been taken in uh, portrait mode. So this is where I was getting those uh, 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 wallpaper options from earlier. There's a lot that you can do with your pictures. Um, say I want to, oops. Okay, so say I wanna take this picture and uh, send it somewhere. I don't think it's working on AirPlay. Let's see. Come on. Okay. So there will be a button in the lower left that's like a box with an arrow through it. If, if you tap on that, then it'll let you choose where to send it. So you can put it in a message um, or add it to an email. Uh, you can even print it from this uh, if you have a printer on your wireless network. Um, see, I'm going to restart the sharing there because I think I uh, didn't like what I was doing. Okay. All right. So uh, that's kind of the crash course on photos. And now for the App Store, this is your window into all the apps, uh, games, productivity tools that have been developed. Uh, you just go into your App Store app. Looks like a blue button with the white A on it. It'll show you uh, some popular apps. You can search for any apps on the store here. Um, I, Older phones, I believe there will be a tab for updating apps, but that's not, um, that's basically handled for you automatically on newer phones. Um, you can find categories of apps. So like if I wanted to find uh, specifically like photo or video editing apps, there's options here. Um, all kinds of things to browse. Uh, I'll sort of leave you to that. Um, oh, a couple that we do recommend through the library. Uh, I'll go to the search bar here, go to search, and we'll look up Hoopla. Skip past the ad for Audible. Um, so Hoopla, I already have it, but if you don't, um, instead of open on the right, it'll say install. Uh, Hoopla is one of our e-library services. You can check out books uh, and, uh, you know, audiobooks, movies, other materials through Hoopla. Uh, super useful. Um, and that just uses your Downers Grove uh, Public Library card. There's also Libby that shows up as a related search and OverDrive. Uh, these are all uh, eBooks um, and audiobooks apps that you can uh, download and access through your library card. Um, so pretty handy. And the next thing I wanna show you Siri uh, because Siri can also help make using your phone a little bit easier. Um, if you have a home button, you're going to press and hold that for a little bit. Um, if you do not have a home button on your phone, uh, just hit the lock screen button. A little bit on Apple Music. No. Oh. Yep. Um. <laughs> so what's going to happen is this little orb pops up at the bottom, and whatever voice commands you give it, it will try to to follow. Um, so let's see. 
yeah, so it's it's not understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> but if I say try again in a moment. Set a timer for 20 minutes. Check that out. I love this. Um, cool. With certain phones, you can also you don't even need to press the button. You can just use the voice command and say, hey, Siri, set a timer for whatever. It's great if you're working in the kitchen. Um, there's other things like you can have Siri search for you. Uh, any set a questions? timer for two minutes. <laughs> Setting. Um, and just, you know, as a heads up, it is going to go off after that two minutes, but. Uh. Um, you can also ask Siri for directions. You can ask Siri about the weather. Um, any, I'm gonna switch this off. Um, any uh, uh, contact you have in your contacts app, you can have Siri call or open a text for. Um, so I'm not gonna demonstrate on that. Um, but lots of things, lots of commands that Siri is able to recognize. And if Siri doesn't recognize a command, it'll turn into a, a web search. So it's another uh, just tip. Um, some other tricks, you can take a screen cap of your phone screen. Um, if you have a home button, you're going to uh, click that button at the same time you hit the lock screen button. Um, if you don't have a phone, uh, home, sorry, if you don't have a home button on your phone, uh, you're going to tap the uh, minus volume and the lock screen at the same time. Oops, did that wrong. Oh my God. There we go. So this just saves whatever you're looking at as an image. Uh, that comes in handy every so often. Um, you can also, uh, to move around the home screen, just tap and hold the app. Uh, newer phones are going to ask you if you'd like to delete it or uh, to edit the home screen. Older iPhones, uh, it'll start wiggling all the apps for you so you can kind of drag and move them around. Um, it can do that if I tap edit home screen. And see here, it lets me move any of them, recategorize any of my folders, can like switch apps around within a folder. Um, I have a, you might be able to tell I have a very particular way of organizing all my apps. Um, I've got a folder for, you know, social media apps, folder for games, um, folder for, uh, you know, bank and, uh, you know, money stuff. How do you make a folder? Great question. Um, so I'm just gonna, oops, no, cancel. Uh, so say we have two apps here on the home screen you'd like to uh, group together. You just drag one on top of the other. Oh my goodness. And it creates a folder. You can then tap to open that folder. And if you wanna, it kind of, Based on the phone's knowledge of what the apps are or what they're for, um, it'll sort of broadly categorize them. But if you want to change the name, um, I don't know what I would call this particular folder, but Andrew's folder and then tap out of that. And there we are. Um, and uh, here again, I got kind of cute with it and I named uh, my folders with emojis. That's not required. Um, <laughs> but so like my, my entertainment apps, my you know streaming services, I just called it a popcorn bucket. Uh, you could call it you know movies and TV if you want, whatever you'd like, whatever makes sense for you and for how you'd like things organized. 
Um, there's also, when the apps are, are wiggling, you can move them around. So if, for example, you'd like to restructure your home row here, uh, you can do that. Say, I'd really like this app here on the home row and move them around. You're totally free to do that. Um, there's a lot of ways you can customize the iPhone and it really makes sense to kind of think about what you use most often, what would be mo most useful for your uh, daily use of the phone and, you know, put those front and center. Andrew, my apps are a mess right now. I've got four pages of it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, I'm thinking like having a travel folder. So that way, yeah. you know, American Airlines, United, Marriott. But so like I have American on page one, Marriott on page two, go to page four for Hilton. So how do, how do I get them moving from like the five pages worth of apps I have to get it to, let's say the first page where the folder is now gonna be created. Yeah, so this can be kind of tough, but you're just going to, you're just going to edit that home screen. You're gonna drag the app over and it'll give you, whoops. So for example, with this one, I'm dragging it onto a new page. That's made a new page on my home screen. Okay. So, all you have to do is just hold it at the side of the screen until it moves all the way over to the, the page you want it on. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Um, and a couple other tips, uh, switching between apps, if you double tap on the home button or if you swipe up and over uh, on a, an iPhone 10 or later, It'll open all the apps that you have currently open. Um, this is useful if it's just too much, you wanna get rid of some of these. Uh, all you need to do is swipe up on that app and it'll close it. Uh, you might find that having too many apps open slows your phone down. Um, so I, every so often I go through and I just cut it down to some of the key ones. Um, another suggestion, if your phone is ever, you know, ever slow or uh, being uncooperative, uh, you might want to restart it. Uh, in this era of smartphones, we forget that we can actually turn our phones off. Um, you can do that pretty simply by uh, either holding, I think on an, on an older phone, you're gonna hold the lock screen button. Um, it'll ask you to slide your thumb across the, uh, to the right at the bottom of the screen to shut it off. Um, and then on a newer phone, you just hold the plus volume button and the lock screen button. Um, pretty handy, you can just pinch them on either side like that and it allows you to power it off. Uh, there might also be some options for, uh, you know, medical information, stuff like that. Um, I'm just gonna cancel that. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it as far as getting around your phone, organizing your phone a little bit, some of the basic settings. And then, of course, we covered uh, sending and receiving text messages and phone calls and uh, doing some other work in the messaging app. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd like to see if there's any questions we can go over. Um, if there's anything else I can demonstrate, I'll try to, but we've got a few minutes at the end here now. Do you have to enable Surrey? That's a good question. Um, you do not. Siri no. just switched on uh, from when you first get the phone. If you start it up from factory settings, Siri is ready to be used from the from the beginning. Okay. 
Andrew, I have a question about iCloud. Sure, yeah. Keep getting a message on my phone that my iCloud is almost full. How do okay. I access it and delete things out of there? Okay, so I personally haven't used iCloud very extensively. I'm sort of a pack rat as far as just keeping things on my phone. Every so often I take all my photos and just load them onto my computer and call it a day. Um, but I believe what you'll wanna do, let's see, in the settings app, that's part of your Apple ID. So I'll tap here. Um, you go into iCloud and then I think manage storage. If you're finding that you're constantly running out of storage, you might want to get some more. Um, that's just under change storage plan here. So yeah, for example, I just have the, the buck a month, uh, 50 gig. Um, it goes up to, to two terabytes. That's massive. That's more than almost anybody would need. Um, but those are some options. Um, another thing you can do in the iCloud settings is cut off certain apps from using the iCloud. Um, so for example, if I decide that I don't really need, well, let's see. Yeah, if I don't need my voice memos to be saved to the cloud, that that's a lot of space right there. You can just switch that off. Um, and it'll only store them locally on your phone itself. Um, there's others. Uh, photos tend to be a big offender as far as uh, eating up storage space. Um, so, you know, another thing you can do is uh, plug your phone into your computer and just offload some of the data um, from that, some of the photos. Uh, it should be pretty easy. I think you can still do that with iTunes, but when you plug your phone in, it'll prompt you to uh, take some further action on it. So if that is uh, downloading photos, things like that. Um, that should help clear up some space. Um, okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? Anything you'd like to see in more detail? Uh, we have a couple more minutes. Here. Of respiratory viruses, including COVID-19, wear yes. face masks yes. at all times, which covers your nose, mouth, and chin. Patrons not wearing masks properly may be asked to leave. Also, maintain a distance of at least six feet from others. Um, on the iCloud, it says that I have stuff on my iCloud. I never remember putting anything there. It says there's photos and backups and docs. How do I get them off? So, yeah, backups are another thing. Um, what I would do first thing is uh, take your, your charging cable. Do you know what model of phone you have? A 5S. A 5S, okay. So I think that that doesn't use the lightning for it. That's got the older style. Um, take your charging cable, plug it into the phone, plug the USB side into your computer, um, and you should be able to pretty easily, like I said, I think it's going to ask you, it'll prompt you to, to download certain information. Um, so you can just take anything from your phone and move it onto your computer. Um, and then at that point, you'd be free to delete the originals. So if you take all the photos off your phone, um, you know, you can then erase them from your phone. But honestly, I would probably just recommend getting more iCloud storage space. I don't remember putting anything on the iCloud. Did it, does it just happen? I think you, 
I don't know this off the top of my head, but I think you are given some storage space, uh, you know, by default, um, in case you exceed like your your physical storage space on the phone itself. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Like with, with an iPad, I think when you buy the phone, it gives you so much storage space. So like an iPad gives you, it used to give you 16, now it gives you 32. But mm -hmm. after you after you get that uh, up to that, then you have to pay for it. So, and Thank you. is it true like with the iPad, even though you delete something, it's never really deleted? Like an app? That's yeah, so um, that's another good point. Uh, there is probably going to be a copy or a temp file or a backup somewhere. Um, so I wouldn't trust too much in that. Um, for example, if you you know, just dump all your photos, delete all your photos, um, and expect that you can find them later in some deleted photo folder. Um, I wouldn't put too much, too much hope in that, but uh, it's it's maybe going to be bouncing around somewhere um, if it was ever saved to the phone. So. Just something to think about. Um, so let's see. Yeah, at this point, uh, I think we're going to wrap things up. Um, thank you all for being here. And I hope this was uh, of some benefit to you understanding the phone a little Thank bit you. better. Yeah, Thank of course. You. Thank you. Very good. Thanks so much. Thank um, you. And uh, I do also want to take this time to put in a little plug for a class that I hope to be teaching in mid-January. Um, and that'll be on an app called Discord. Uh, it's kind of, you know, you can apply a lot of the, the skills here um, from using a phone to that. It's another communication app. Um, and it's something that obviously everyone here is somewhat conversant in Zoom, um, but it's kind of uh, offers some some similar features to Zoom. Um, and yeah, uh, check out our other classes uh, offered virtually through Downers Grove Public Library. Um, if you go to the website homepage dglibrary.org. Uh, and then into virtual events, uh, you'll be able to see the calendar. Um, and yeah, once again, uh, thank you all for being here and have a great day.